Hello from Romania. For some, a home. For some, a wish on a bucket list of countries to visit. And for others, already a memory. Remember, we used to travel the world. We like to say that we have it all. The beautiful city of Constanza by the seaside, the vivid and colorful Bucharest, the breathtaking monasteries of Bukovina, and of course, the magical land of Transylvania with all its fascinating castles and unaltered fortified churches. And that, of course, leads us to, as we like to call it, probably the best city in the world, the one and only Brasov. Located in the heart of the country, a visit here promises you nature and sports, hiking into the wilderness, bears, ski resorts, cultural sites. This is uh, actually a really good starting point for day trips to interesting cities nearby, but also a lot of castles and fortified churches. Uh, even if we talk about the famous uh, Bran Castle as uh, due to Dracula story, uh, but also part of UNESCO World Heritage for that matter. But basically it gives you a lot of freedom and a lot of tasty food. <laughs> tasty food that you might uh, find it a bit heavy. Uh, but if you ask any Romanian, uh, of course, uh, we only have delicious food. Most importantly, it gives you a lot of history. And this this is this is my favorite subject. This is why I became a local guide. This and the fact that I get to meet the coolest, most wonderful and beautiful people. I'm kidding. I do it because I can talk a lot. And as you'll get to see in this conversation, in this presentation, this is actually one of my hobbies. But <laughs> on a serious note, uh, I truly believe that the way to understanding one another, also known as tolerance, comes from understanding one's past, saying I know where you come from and I accept you. I also believe that history is something that unites us, it's something that we all have in common. We might not have the same political view, we might not like the same sports team or pray to the same God, but we all have history. On a personal level, if we talk about um, a region, a country, on a local level, you get the point. As famously uh, Dracula said, there is no escape. I think he said that, I don't know. But I am super happy to tell people about our history here in Russia, Transylvania, Romania. And I always challenge people to think about theirs, to spot what we have in common. Traditions, customs, dances, dishes, who knows? And from here, it's usually a small, small step to realize that we are, in fact, the same. We might be different, but this is always, always a good thing. Now, the nonprofit organization I work for, Culture Association, started their activity 10 years ago in Bucharest, our capital, by organizing the very first free walking tours in Romania. Half a year later, Brasov was on the same track. Now, you should know that Brasov as a city, for the past uh, few years, it was always the second touristic city after Bucharest because of the number uh, of tourists that visited our city. Uh, we stand behind the saying, every day, rain or shine or snow or hail. Once again, the weather here is strange, so <laughs> we don't know exactly what to expect. And this is actually the first time in 10 years that we are not running our tours. Uh, there might be a reason. One of Brasov's old names is Corona, and this is the Latin word for crown. But I guess we have to be extra careful now with the coronavirus. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, up until this point, uh, as you get to hear the numbers, uh, of tourists and uh, maps. In Bucharest, we um, have guided more than 130,000 tourists, uh, more than 40,000 in Brasov, and we have printed uh, more than 120,000 free maps for both cities. So this is how Culture Association started its activity. 
but we soon realized we should also organize activities for locals, not only for tourists. So we have organized theme tours, exhibitions, charity tours, under the saying, discover the city's history inside its walls. And this is how we got to work on a project uniting both tourists and locals, called History at the First Person. It all started in 2016, when the National Anthem Museum of Brasov won the funding for cultural projects offered by the municipality of Brasov. Our part as the Cultural Association was to recruit, train and supervise the historical characters. The idea, a cultural project meant to bring closer to the hearts and ears of everyone, the history of the city. Use our most important historical characters that shaped the city, changed mindsets, in a word, the influencers of Russia, <laughs> at least the ones uh, between the 16th and the beginning of the 20th century, with one goal and one goal only to share the history of the city. But of course, we wanted to do it in style. So, as you get to see here, they were dressed as in the era they lived in. We also wanted to do it in a playful way. If you can imagine, you are uh, now free to travel once again. <laughs> For some reason, you, you choose our city. So you are in Russia, in the main square, in the council square. Uh, it should be maybe packed at least a, a little with uh, with people, locals or, or tourists. Uh, and you get to see one of these historical characters. You might be curious, you might be shy, uh, you might pop the first question, they might, uh, might do the same. But in the end, uh, not only that you can listen to their story, you can also ask questions of your own, you can take pictures. So this is how you can make a connection. The first year was the most difficult one, as we didn't know what to expect. The weather wasn't necessarily on our side. Uh, the time frame again didn't uh, did not bring us to uh, too many advantages because it happened between mid-September and the beginning of October. So in that time, we don't have a lot of tourists, and for this very first year, the budget was was limited. But it brought us. Uh, a lot of lessons and the prize as the best cultural project of the year. So this first year was full of lessons and forced us to find new ways to adapt, later predict and solve different situations. Over the next three editions, so for the next three years, uh, the constant aspect was about who would organize it and that was the Cultural Association, uh, the one that I'm working for. Who would be the strategic partner uh, because you need research and historians and documents so that role was played by uh, the national anthem museum of brasov and who would finance the project obviously the municipality of brasov another constant aspect <laughs> was about the challenges that we had to face uh, it's a good thing that we love challenges and uh, we believe they make us grow Again, I think this is something that Dracula said. But for the first part, to talk a bit about the main challenges as the perspective or the, of the organizers. Um, sometimes I think we all wish that one day uh, could have 40 hours, not 24. Uh, but for us, uh, due to the fact that all activities must be done after we sign the contract with the municipality of Brasov, usually the time is extremely short. The shortest ever was 10 days to organize everything. And 10, 10 days means to find 10 people, that would be the historical characters, and later to uh, make 10 costumes for them. So yes, a great challenge, this one of time. Also, you have to find 10 people that are willing to wear a costume, talk to thousands of strangers every day, work during the summer, speak English, have an interest in history, and a great charisma. You also have to think about how are you going to keep people engaged over 
50, 60 days, two months, give or take, while they are doing the same job every single day, over and over, and they are dressed with two or three layers of clothes during the summer. So our summer, <laughs> it, it depends. You, you'll get some rain, you get some cold days, but usually is uh, around 30, 35 uh, Celsius degree. So, yes. It's always a challenge to keep the same level of energy in the last week as uh, it used to be in the, in the first week. Uh, and imagine that as a historical character, you would work for four or five hours between 11 a.m. and 8 p.m. And you will have one or two days off uh, each week. Uh, the thing is that every year we, had, uh, we, ha we have tested several options as for the number of hours, as for the days off and things like that. So this is why, as a general rule. Uh, for us, uh, this is the reason we are using fabrics that only resemble the original costumes but it is more important to use fabrics that are suitable for hot weather for example so the time the recruitment part the excitement level and you also have to keep reinventing <laughs> or adding at least new activities or new characters both for the public and uh, the municipality of Russia that each year they might uh, change or they might require specific uh, things and, and things like that. But also you have to change it for um, uh, the historical characters. Beside the fact that they are doing a great job at telling their stories, so promoting our history in our uh, city, uh, even for, for them, at some point, they need something. Uh, they need something new, especially because the project, like I said, is for uh, two months, 50, 60 days. So uh, it might be a bit too much. From our side, this is pretty much the time, the recruitment, the enthusiasm, and uh, the reinventing part that you always have to uh, consider. Let's see, though, uh, as for the perspective of the historical characters, what do they have to face? And uh, you'll see here that we are going to talk about money, about the weather, about costumes, and about the board entire uh, thing. Uh, the first year, 2016, was the one that was pretty much a big test for all of us involved in that project. But the money were a big issue because um, everybody, not only the historical characters, were uh, uh, were paid um, with a really small amount of money. Uh, after that, as you get to see in the next years, uh, we deal with that, so now it's not a problem anymore. I've let it at one, so just you would have the same colors uh, and also four items, but there was never a problem after 2016. The weather, uh, I've let it for all years the same because it was always a, a challenge. Uh, not all years were the same. Uh, sometimes it was extremely hot, sometimes there was a lot of rain, so it depends. But this is an activity uh, and everything happens outdoor. There's nothing that we can do about the weather. Or I don't know, maybe next year I'm going to uh, make a witch, a historical character here in uh, Transylvania and she can help me with the weather, maybe, I will think about it. But uh, um, beside that, we can only think about what should these people do uh, during extreme uh, temperatures, for example. So we have the museum uh, as a partner, we have another hostel in Russia as a partner, so during the hard time, this is where they can go uh, and protect, protect themselves from uh, either really hot weather or either rain or storms or things like that. Um, you also see the costumes. The first year, uh, pretty much, there was, first of all, there was, a, there was a delay from our side uh, with the tailor, so uh, they weren't ready on time. I think it was also because it was the first year people weren't necessarily used to uh, having um, having this vulnerable thing being in the square uh, and uh, so I, I think in a way they were uh, 
vulnerable about it, just being in the square and being dressed. It was a new thing for everybody. Uh, but after that, we also changed the, um, uh, the tailors, so uh, we managed to uh, have it uh, right on time, so it wasn't an issue anymore. Just as with the money, I've let it add one, yeah, just to have the same colors. And the board entire thing, the first year, uh, it wasn't necessarily, nobody had time. It was for a shorter uh, period, so nobody uh, got to be bored or to be tired. Uh, the next year, though, in 2017, uh, we thought about having eight characters instead of ten. So it was just a bit busier for them. Uh, and this is why, and it was for a longer time also, for 63 days in that year. So um, they were also tired as being in the same uh, place every day and doing the same thing. So in the next years, as you get to see, uh, because we changed a lot of the activities and uh, whatever they were supposed to do, not only just uh, interacting with the, with the people, also um, going to the parks or going to the malls or doing other things just to keep them uh, busy if you want to. And as you get to see, that uh, level changed. Now, we've seen the challenges from our side and from uh, the side of the of the guides, you might wonder why we do it. <laughs> so first, because this has two sides once again, uh, we'll talk about how do the guides feel about this experience, and we'll also talk about uh, what do people say about our historical character. So uh, what does the public think about it? Now, for the guides every single year, it's actually, I have to tell you, it's really uh, beautiful to see this transformation over the summer. Uh, most of them are uh, really young, uh, at least in the last uh, two years. So even uh, just in high school, for example. So it's really great to see how they, uh, how they grow in uh, two months. Uh, this is the first year, as you get to see, people were happy that they uh, learned about the city. Um, some of them were preparing to uh, become guides. Uh, some of them were happy that they were on TV. <laughs> so that's always a plus. Uh, in the next year, uh, again, people were happy that they were involved in a project that helped promoting the city. And the fact that tourists were uh, really um, impressed by them, I think it was a boost uh, in their confidence. Um, the next year, so the third year, again, the team was great, the area was great, see tourists once again, <laughs> uh, that's, a good, that's a great plus. Um, and the fact that you get to meet a lot of people. And uh, last year, uh, again, a lot of young people, so best way to spend my summer, <laughs> uh, I will miss it as for the, for the project. A lot of uh, improvement in practice as for English or public speaking. Uh, we got to be on the radio, so this, this is always something fun to do. Uh, or being extra shy or uh, learning how to be more open-minded and self-confident. Uh, learning more history uh, and the fact that we uh, get to meet a lot of new people. Also, uh, about what the, the people say about our historical characters over here, I will read it just to make it uh, easier for you. Great people and even uh, greater actors made my visit in Russia unforgettable. Uh, from Stefan, uh, Roxana told us that projects like this one make me feel proud of my country and its history and happy to be back home. And Earl told us that uh, this what a fantastic uh, history lesson these young folks give. If you see them in the historical center, walk up to them and uh, talk to them. So why do we do it? <laughs> Mostly we do it because this is the perfect scenario. Uh, history in a really fun way for everybody. We are daily in the main square from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, we go to the parks, so to the industrial part of the city. Uh, we also go to the mall. Over here, you'll see uh, how we looked in the first, in the very, very first year. 
uh, the next year was a bit more uh, sunnier at least um like i said uh, we try to we organize tours we even had fashion workshops uh, opening events uh, having artists uh, painting live uh, for example, this is the third edition. Uh, mostly we do it because we can reach to so many people. And you don't have to be into history or into art. This is just a fun way to learn about um, historical characters. Now, we also think about, like I said, this is the project both for tourists and locals. For the locals, we really think that this is really important uh, for people to know about their uh, city because once you know what happened here uh, you'll also feel feel more connected and eager to do things for your own city it's just uh, the connection that you need to be uh, more connected to your own community for the tourists on the other side obviously we like to brag about our city <laughs> but it's also uh, it comes down to the experience that they have here because usually they are really curious about the place that they are going to visit so this is just one way to help them discover a bit more and learn a bit more about our city uh, but like I said in a fun way in a colorful way as you get to see here with all these costumes um, and uh, making their experience here something uh, like one of the um, uh, people said uh, making it unforgettable uh, those are the challenges uh, the reason why we do it is like I said history is something that we believe uh, unites us all so it's great to have this uh, um, way of sharing it to everybody but to tell you a bit about how we do it um, as I like to call it uh, the bag of solutions. You need creativity, you need to celebrate, and you also need to listen. Now, when we talk about creativity, it means pretty much they have to think about it on, on both sides, if you want to. For example, for the historical characters, you could give them a speech, they could repeat it all over again, or you could create an environment in which they can discover on their own and have that aha moment. This is why, for example, after we have the 10 historical characters, so we have, uh, we recruited them, they have a week uh, of workshops with a local guide, an actor and a historian, uh, both practical and in theory. Uh, we organize a historical tour of the city for them, we visit museums. We also cover subjects as storytelling, public speaking, learn by doing, play roles, teamwork, acting and moving techniques. But we actually never stop working on the way uh, we present our stories. We constantly adapt it and readjust it according to the feedback from our tourists. We also keep this safe environment so people can test and we decide together which way to go. Uh, as I like to say, people are like flowers. Some need more light, some more water, but they all need to know that you are there for them. So you have to listen uh, to their ideas, even though you know <laughs> they are not going to work, but you just have to direct them by asking the right questions. So you still have to encourage them. So you have to let them be creative, uh, encourage them to do that, uh, but also be super creative with keeping them engaged from fun challenges to competitions to ice cream day and beyond. Everybody pretty much has to be creative and you have to let everybody be creative. You also have to celebrate every single step. Now, maybe not every single step. <laughs> uh, for example, in one shift, uh, as a historical character, you would make about 4,000 steps, so not every single one, but at least the important ones. Uh, celebrate with a drink after the first week and also see how you can help them, test the water, how they feel, if you can help them. Uh, there must be cake, <laughs> so there's always a cake in the middle just to celebrate that 
uh, we made it, half of it, we still have half, uh, and always uh, present at the end, nothing fancy or expensive, just like a cool fridge magnet, a uh, personalized mug, uh, mostly just inside jokes turned into souvenirs. Uh, I think it just it just shows you you care about it, uh, you care about them. So I don't know how you feel about it. You might say this is uh, a girly thing. Maybe it is. I don't know. But I just want to say it's working. So if you are to test it, feel free to do that. Uh, you also have to listen. You have to listen all the time to them, uh, and you have to let go of this um attitude saying that okay so this is your job we have trained you for it you get paid so go do it and this is the easiest way <laughs> but it's not working uh and you have to learn to embrace uh, the other one you have to uh say let's see what you miss for doing the job right and what can i do for you it's the same uh idea you still pay some people for a job but they once again need you to be there for them so you always have to listen uh, I think that people in general are amazing we are creative adaptable curious emotional talented reliable amb ambitious we, we just we're just beautiful creatures uh, it gets messy and super fun when we have to work together <laughs> uh, we have different rhythms we have different values and beliefs and so on uh, but this is why i um, i pretty much have three rules uh, as the manager of this project uh, my door is always open for two months uh, you can call me text me uh, whatever you need i'm there my door is always always open uh, my second rule, I don't judge people, nor try to change them, so I accept and try to address things in their way, see which way works for them. As you know, people are different, so uh, with different rhythms and different things that they like or they respond to, so that's it, I just need to discover which one and try to adapt to it. And the third thing is that I challenge and push people with support, encouragement, and guidance. Of course, the best way that I can, uh, but this is uh, what, I, uh, what I always do as these three rules. Um, to show you what uh, have we done, over here you see for the four years, uh, we started, 2017 was the only one that had eight historical characters, the rest, all of them have uh, had 10. Um, and as you can see, we started from 3,000 people that we talked to, so telling our stories, and we made it all the way to 49,000 people that heard our stories. Uh, so, yeah, now looking at this one, <laughs> I really like what I see. Uh, and otherwise, of course, for uh, the media, uh, as how many times were we on TV or over the radio, you get to see it over there. Uh, more importantly is that we talk to a lot of, a lot of people. Um, for this moment, we don't know exactly when we are going to do it again. <laughs> the plan was of course for this summer, but uh, due to the coronavirus, I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, but maybe next year, uh, maybe you'll also come and visit us and uh, talk to these historical, uh, historical characters. Uh, the presentation was about the project called History at the First Person here in Russia. So you um, uh, listen to this historical personal interpretation in an urban outdoor setting, a case study from Russia, Romania. Once again, this is our main square. Um, thank you very much for listening to us and I really hope we are going to see uh, at some point, see each other um, and I get to show you my CD. Uh, and of course we can debate about the tasty or the heavy food but uh, soon to happen that one too.
thank you once again uh, stay safe and uh, if you have any kind of questions uh, feel free to uh, to tell us all the best <laughs>